in Christ with Pastor Curtis and Pastor Tammy. <laughs> We're glad you're here tonight. and We want to just encourage you in the word tonight. We have a fantastic word for you tonight. And we just thank God that you're here to receive the word. Let me just before we start, give you the telephone number 1248-996-8954. And we're looking forward to your call tonight. Pastor, we're going to be talking about sonship tonight. Amen. The power of sonship and Amen. God's sons and uh, all those good things, the benefits that come with being a son of God. Amen. But tonight, Pastor, before we start, I want to give a, uh, a shout out to our bishop, Bishop Wayne T., Dr. Beverly Y. Jackson. I want to thank them. My mom and dad. All they pour into us and give into us. We love you guys. Amen. And, uh, Thank God for you. Amen. Pastor, our phone number tonight, 248-996-8954. Amen. We're believing God for people to call in tonight. We're going to pray. Amen. Prophesy tonight. Amen. Give people a word tonight. Amen. Teach a good, inspiring word tonight. Yes, sir. Build yes, up the sir. people of God. I'm Amen. excited about tonight's subject. I am too. God's son. So where are we going first? We're going to go back to Luke 418, Pastor. Okay. We're going to just take a look at that because I want to establish tonight that the anointing that is on the life of the believer mm. is so, it is the anointing to do something, Pastor. Okay. We're not getting anointed just to have chill bumps. We're right. not just anointed to just spin around in the floor. Right. But the anointing is for service. And right. so tonight we're going to look at the Word of God right. and Luke 4 and 18, and then we're going to go from there mm -hmm. to prove out that as a son, you mm -hmm. have the qualifications to get a job done. Pastor, mm -hmm. this thing is not just about having goosebumps and running around telling people that you're anointed, right. but it is about being able to go out and demonstrate the power of God right. on a lost and dying world. Right. You know, Pastor, I, I think that uh, when we see people in ministry mm -hmm. and we see people come up, they get prayer, hands are laid Amen. on them, we, we see a manifestation of the power of God Amen. on the people's Amen. life. But I think more importantly, after that, what we ought to see That's right. is a empowerment in those people people's lives that Amen. have been ministered to by the men and women of God. Amen. We ought to see a manifestation in their lives for service. Amen. And that's what we're talking about tonight. Amen. You know, you come up, you get prayed for, uh, we see a manifestation because we know you ain't putting on because nobody puts no. on, you know, no, nobody no, no, want to, no, no. you know, roll around in the floor. <laughs> uh, but the manifestation of God's power has different manifestations. Amen. It shows up differently in people's Amen. lives. But what we're not seeing Mm. is a manifestation of what happened to you when we laid hands on Amen. you. After you got up off the floor, Amen. what we need to see now is a manifestation of what God is doing in your life in power. Because Amen. there was something that was imparted to you. That's right. There was something that left you That's right. when the men and women of God ministered to Amen. you. And all that is doing is setting you up for your service. Amen, Pastor. Putting you in a place where the anointing of God can be upon your life to walk out your destiny and your calling and do what Amen. God has called you to do. And I can't imagine, Pastor, I've said this many times, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what's going on with the people because when God has done something for you, you yeah. ought to want to be able to go out and do that same That's thing right. for somebody That's right. else. That's right. There is no way That's that right. the deliverance that I experienced, the power right. of God that came on my life, the right. things that I have been set free from, Pastor yes. Curtis, that I don't want to demonstrate that. I don't want to show people that there is a way out because I found the way out. I know that God can heal. I know that God can deliver. That's I right. know that God can set no free. Question about and so it. what I do when I preach the gospel, when I prophesy, yeah. when we do those things we are demonstrating what was given to us right. what happened to us right. and we want to share that with someone who's lost and confused that's and right. hurting that's right. this is a hurting time that's for right. people and especially now that we're entering into a season of holidays mm -hmm. people are really going to wow. be going through some emotional things you know people lose their loved ones people true. feeling you know abandoned by their loved ones that's and true. so there needs to be some people out here see the church is not just the four walls that's I right. think the body of Christ has gotten in their mind that it's about auxiliaries mm -hmm. it's about being in the building right. it's about somebody preaching at you. Right. You know, I've said this many times. When are we going to get healed? Amen. When is the church going to get healed? Amen, when are we going to stop talking about what somebody done to me? Right. When are we going to stop being the woman with the issue of blood and, and turn it to Jesus? Jesus? Amen. I when agree. are we going to start demonstrating the power of God? When right. are we going to stop crying and boohooing about what happened or didn't happen in our life and demonstrate hmm. the power of God so that some sinner man or some sinner woman can miss hell? I thank God every day, Pastor, yes. that somebody took the time they weren't so concerned with their house note, right. their car note, right. what they didn't have, what right. they didn't get. But they were consumed with the anointing and the power of God, and they wanted to deliver that into my life. Well, you know, Pastor, what Jesus said to the disciples, he said, you know, what you freely receive. That's right, Pastor. Now you're supposed to go and freely, freely give, give that. It. And the great commission that Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 28, when he said, you know, um, uh, all power in heaven and earth is given to me, That's now right. I'm putting that on you. You oh, go oh. and you preach the gospel to Amen. everything that moves. 
Uh, the Bible, man. the Bible. I mean, literally. Yeah, amen. You know, literally. And and the Bible teaches us. Uh, uh, Jesus said, uh, I think it's Luke chapter number ten. Okay. He said, you know, there is no lack of harvest. Okay. The lack is coming in when there are laborers to okay. send into the harvest. All right. And, and he said, pray ye, you know, that the Lord will send people into the harvest. And then wow. he said, go. Amen. Into the harvest. And so what we see now, Pastor, in our world is we see a harvest of souls that are ripe for the plucking. Ready. Ready, ready to receive ready Jesus to be, Christ. They see. may not even know it. Wow. Up front. Okay. But when we minister the gospel of our Lord and okay. Savior Jesus Christ under the anointing of God, wow. a man's life is going to change. We are Amen. literally snatching people out of hell, Wow! bringing them into the light of the kingdom of God. Okay, Pastor. So, so God is telling us now, you know, everybody's complaining about what's going on here, what's going on there. And what's very interesting, when I put out a challenge to our disciples on Saturday, mm -hmm. I asked a question. I said, how many people yes, you have witnessed to you about Jesus Christ in the last year. And do you know, Pastor, not one disciple Nobody. could honestly say that someone, other than somebody in our ministry, right. ministered the gospel of Jesus Christ Come to them. Now, now, that's saying a whole lot. In a city of over 30,000 30, churches, 3, some with two and three in the same block. That's right, Pastor. Nobody is in the streets ministering the gospel. So Come there's on. a real challenge and a real clarion call, if you will, to the okay. people of God okay. to begin to get back to ministering to people because that's the only way things are going to turn around if a man's okay. heart is changed for Jesus Christ. So that's when we're going to just dive in right here, Luke 4 and 18, because I want people to know that if you're saved, mm -hmm. if you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, mm -hmm. you have the power of God on that's the right. inside of you right. to get the job done. Right. The Bible says in Luke 4, 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now this is Jesus mm -hmm. talking because he has anointed me with the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God okay. to preach the good news to the poor. Mm. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind okay. and set at liberty them that are bruised and preach the acceptable year right. of the Lord. The so pastor, mm -hmm. when we got in Christ, right. when we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior right. and we got in Christ, right. we have the same ability, the That's same the Bible, power, the, the same kind of anointing, That's right. the kind of anointing that will take a dead man and bring them back to life mm. because you don't just necessarily have to be naturally dead but you can be spiritually dead pastor uh -huh, and right. we have the ability in us when we become saved when we get the spirit of God on the inside of us to bring a man back from Ooh. death spiritually to life in Jesus Christ and I'm challenging you out there right now if you're in a church right now mm -hmm. and they're not challenging you to leave the four walls and go out and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ see pastor I found out folks want to be up in the pulpit and they want to preach, and they will call their cousins and their mom and all them My and God. tell them, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be preaching Sunday. <laughs> right. But you know what? Your real ministry is not in the pulpit. That's right. Your real ministry is out in the streets right. and the highways and the byways compelling men to come to Jesus. That's it. And if you're not about the Father's business, if you're not compelling men, then you have to question your love That's and your right. labor, your, That's work, right. your work, Pastor. That's right. Because we've got to get back to the ministry of Jesus Christ. That's right. Pastor. Jesus was about using the anointing that was placed on him right. to snatch men out of their degradation, out of their out of their doubt, their unbelief, their fears, yes. their frustrations. Yes. We, yes. You, there's no shortage of frustrated people, Pastor. No, oh, no, 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 no. You no, live no on shortage. any block in the city, and you got some folks frustrated on your block. That's right. If you got family members, you got some folks in your family frustrated. Right. Right. You've got some people around you right now that are not saved. Listen, why don't you do us a favor and give us a call at 1248-996-8954. We want to pray for you. Yes. We want to encourage encourage you. We want to infuse you with the power of God, the anointing of God. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to be walking around not knowing what your commission is or what, what God has called you to do. We've got people, pastor, in the church and don't know what they're supposed to do. That's true. They think their job is to agitate the pastor. <laughs> they think their job is to tell, you know, I remember some years ago, one of the brothers, you know, he's not a member of our church no more. He told you that his job, he wanted his job to be critiquing yeah, you. Yeah, he was going to be my... Uh... He wanted to be my worst critic, yeah. my, my best critic. Yeah, <laughs> he, he wanted, wanted to, be to a sit critic. up and listen to the listen to the sermons and then critique them and tell nah, me when you know, you're wrong yeah, and when, when you're right and, and you use the wrong and word right. and you should say it like this. I think I put him out that week. Yeah, you did. Mm -hmm. See, we got to begin to understand that that's not what it's about. It is about saving souls. That's what it's about. And we're in a city right now, in the city of Detroit. Folks need to be saved, sir. Pastor, everywhere around this country, people are crying out for God and wow. the things of God. Wow. There is a there is a hole in every man's heart that's mm. not born again. Come on. And that that hole, that space can that void can only be filled 
uh, through the person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Amen, Christ. Pastor. And so if we would be about our father's business, come on. like he called us to, he said, uh, whoever goes into the vineyard, whatsoever is right, I'll pay. Come on. We got so many Christians trying to believe God for increase in their life, but they ain't, they ain't, they're not working. Ain't working. Right? They're, not, they're not in the vineyard doing what God called us to do. Uh, Christianity is not about being popular. It's not about, no. uh, you know, no. we got so many conferences going on oh, and Lord, people Pastor. sitting up there, all they worried about is who got on what and a bunch of dead <laughs> religion <laughs> and uh, a bunch of homosexuality and uh, uh, who going to come out with the next hottest CD okay. and all this garbage while people dying and going, going to hell, hell, Pastor. While you getting a, your singing group together, somebody is walking past you on their way to hell. On their way to hell. And, not and even we got to get that together That's in the right. body of Christ, we, Pastor. We have to, Pastor. Let's go to Matthew chapter uh, 10 if we can. Okay. I just want to kind of reference the scripture that we uh, we talked about. I want to see the mandate okay. that Christ has given wow. the body of Christ. Okay. You know, we, we look at evangelism as a uh, option in the body of Christ, but wow. evangelism is the main ministry. Come on. I'll take us to a scripture in a little bit in our next segment in Corinthians where it's very, very plain that God has given us a ministry and a word. Okay, Pastor. So when people think that their ministry is singing and this and that, well, you're not going to find that in the Bible. Okay, Pastor. But what you're going to find is God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We have the responsibility to reconcile man back to God. Amen, Pastor. And I think that's why the body of Christ is in such a position that they're in right now because we're not fulfilling the mandate. Okay. All those other things are secondary and thirdary. Amen. But the primary uh, function of the body of Christ is to win souls. And Pastor, you know what? I, I look at the body of Christ or the church when we go to the church building as a fueling station. That's right. I look at it as a place that the people who have been working, yeah. they, been bringing people in from yeah. uh, outside, been, mm -hmm. been praying for mm -hmm. folks, been laying hands on people, been uh, snatching men out of hell. Right. I look at that as a place to come and get refueled, Re built Re back up Re so that you can go back out again. Right. It's not some place that we go and get fat and sassy. That's right. We know a whole lot of word. We know how to prophesy. We know all the right things to say. But it's a place that we come and get refueled. That's we right. need to I praise agree. and worship after we've gone out and ministered to men. We need a place to lift our hands and begin to give God praise because we have been working in the vineyard. Yeah. But if, let okay, me say this ahead. too. And even, even in that, you know, the people of God are so heavy when they come oh, to a worship Lord. service on yes, Sabbath, Sabbath day because they don't have any joy and the reason why they don't have any joy is because they're not they're not in the will of God. Amen. See once you're in the direct will of God for your life, you can find joy. Amen, pastor. Uh, 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 God is a God of joy. Amen. You can take you you can find great joy when you turn around and see four families that you brought wow. to Jesus Christ and now that family is flourishing and Amen. they're out of poverty and Amen. they're out of sickness Amen. and uh, the husband is working, the wife is come working, on, the pastor. children are happy. Yes. Man to take you can you find great joy in that, yes. but when you come, you by yourself you got it you pray you ask god to give you a car he gave you a car with four doors ain't That's nobody right. in it but you but you and so you come you come you sit down you got a uh like you've been sucking lemons right, mad, pastor. Like, because you because you have no real joy so we're challenging our people That's pastor. Right. And i'm finding out that even even in our ministry teaching ministry prophetic ministry we had a bunch of rebellious people and excuse oriented and excuse oriented they don't want to do the work of the church. Wow! And so they, you know, right after, right after <laughs> worship service, here they come, pass with an excuse why they can't do. <laughs> what, I'm shy. What the word of God is telling them to do, and like I say, well, if, if you think God is going to receive that Amen. excuse, then you go right there and give it to Amen. him. Because remember, you're not talking to me. Amen. You're talking to God. Amen. You're telling God that you're not going to obey His word. I believe, Pastor, there's a story in the Bible that talks about a man preparing a wedding dinner. Yeah. And he tells his servants, he says, you know, invite people to yeah, come. Right. And when he invite, they go out and invite the people. Everybody yeah. has an excuse, excuse. why right. they don't mm -hmm. want to come to I the dinner. I just bought a piece of land. I got a wife. I got a wife. Right. I got a yoke of oxen. Yeah, I got to prove them. So you got people who were making excuses when the man was saying, look, everything is ready. Just come to the wedding. Mm. I got everything ready. Anything that you want to do is going to be here. On, You're going to have a good time. Everything come to the wedding. Need. And the interesting thing, now that was the, the so-called elect, the select group of people that he was calling. Mm -hmm. Those were the people who should have wanted to come. Right. But then he told his servant, he said, well, since they're so excuse-oriented, i tell you what you do. You go out to the highways and the hedges compel and them. compel them That's to right. come. That's and right. what I found out is, Pastor, you know who are some of the most on 
fire folks that can come into the body of Christ, people who have been lost, That's people right. who have been That's prostitutes, right. people right. who have been right. drug addicted, yeah. Yeah. people oh, yeah. who have been yeah. hurt, yeah. people who have been wounded. And let me tell you why. Because Jesus said the people who have been, who understand they have been forgiven for come much, on. they love can love much. much. See, evangelism is a labor of love. Yes, it is, sir. And it's a sacrifice. Yes, sir. And of course, it goes against your flesh. Because your flesh don't want to do it. And people are going to reject you, but that's okay. not the problem. The, the, the issue is, are you operating in what wow. God called you wow, to do? Wow, wow, Pastor. So 248 996 8954 is our number. Call in. We're going to pray for you. Amen. If you don't call in, Pastor, let's teach this word Amen. tonight. We're going to teach this because word. Because I believe that, you know, we got to get this word out in the atmosphere so people can begin to understand what our true calling is. And let's Amen. go back to Matthew chapter 10, if we can. Okay. And let's look at verse number five. All right. The Bible says, These twelve Jesus sent forth. Mm. And commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter you not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, preach, saying, What? The, the kingdom, kingdom of, of heaven, heaven is at hand. hand. And here's what I want you to do as you preach. Heal, Heal the, the sick, sick, cleanse the, the lepers, leper, raise the, the dead, dead, cast out devils. devils. Now here it is. Here's the key verse. Freely you have received... Freely give. So in other words, you have received freely that your sickness has been healed. That's right, Pastor. You have received freely that your that the leprosy has been cleansed. Amen. You have received freely that the dead have been raised yes. and the demons have been cast Come out. On. You. Come so on. now why don't you take that same freedom, uh, and, freedom liberty. and liberty that you have yes. now as a minister of the gospel of Come Jesus on, Christ and give it back to people. And you know what, Pastor? People got, may say no, but you've got so many more that will say yes. I'm going to be honest with you, Pastor, and you and I have experienced this. I've been down, we've been to Heart Plaza one yeah, year, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit compelled me to pray for a specific lady. Right. Just yeah. one lady That's and it. her son. Right. That's we what I was supposed to do. We were going about our business, right. And you know, by the time I got through praying for this one lady and line. her son, it was a lie. Somebody was coming saying, excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Can right. you pray for me? Right. Excuse and when I turned around, there was a line of people who wanted prayer. And this was at Hard Plaza. That's right. So don't tell That's me right. that people don't want to hear a prophetic word. Don't tell me people don't want to pray. Don't tell me people don't want to know, is there a way out of my That's lack, right. my right. poverty, That's my right. frustration, That's my right. fears? Right. They want to know, is there That's a Jesus? Right. And That's you right. are the representation of Jesus. You are to represent Jesus. That's right. And if you're not representing Jesus, you're not doing your job. That's it, Pastor. That's it. So the scripture. The people have to know that they have to get out of the pulpit mind. Wow, Pastor. Get out of being in the pulpit to show <laughs> everybody what you know. Okay. Uh, Bishop said, God gave us the pulpit that's two right. times a week. That's Bible right. study. That's right, Pastor. And our Sabbath worship. That's now, right. if I give you one of them, that's right. then what good am I? That's right, Pastor. But every day while you're out on your job. On your job. At, at the, the grocery restaurant. store. At the restaurant. Wherever you go, Come there's on. an opportunity for you to minister to people All and sharpen long. your gift. Come on. And the pulpit is not the place for you to do it. And Pastor, I just encourage our people, leave the other church folks alone. Stop trying to get folks to church hop. Mm, mm, Stop mm. going out here ministering to folks that's already saved. They already saved, so why keep going to them? Because it's comfortable. Right, See, it's comfortable right. to talk to somebody who's already saved about Jesus. Right. And, you know, whatever's going on in the church, well, you need to come to my church because we don't you, do yeah, that. Right, right, right. Well, exactly. this is what we do at our church. No, they're already saved. Right. Go out and get somebody who's not saved. Right. You know, Pastor, we I, I constantly look at our folks sometimes, and I, I thank God for them. Mm -hmm. But I notice this about them. You know, they run to what's comfortable, even at yeah. the end of service. Right. You know, instead of running to somebody who's new, right. a lot of times church folks will run to folks they know. They'll run to the pastor. Pastor, I just want to tell you that was a good word. Right. You know, they run to the pastor instead of running to the folks that are new, running to the people who are just coming in. Right. We've got to get away from that attitude. We've got to get over into a place that I need to go evangelize to somebody who don't know God. That's right. I need to go talk to somebody who may not know Jesus. I may need to pray for somebody who has never had anybody pray for them genuinely with I an agree. anointing I pastor. Agree. I agree. Leave the pastor alone. <laughs> let the pastor, you know, do what he right. just got let to him, working. Right. Let him have a moment. Let his mind clear out because that is the most vulnerable time That's right. a, a, a pastor has when he gets through preaching. That's right. And you can catch the preacher wrong after you know <laughs> pastor really. And you can catch the preacher wrong coming right. with your excuses of why you can't do what he just mm -hmm. taught out of the word of God and get, and get lit up. Get a whooping. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Get so the whooping. best thing to do is leave the preachers alone right. and go ahead and go and minister to people who are coming. Go outside as soon as the service is over in the area that your church is in right. and begin to minister there to people. Go. Take what you learn and go replicate it or duplicate there it. There you go. Absolutely, Pastor. And one of the reasons why we, we're so adamant about this is because we know it's the will of God. And it's right. We know it's the will 
will of God, and and we gotta get the people of God over to a place where they understand what their job is. And God don't ask us; He commands us. Why you you read a that? scripture just a minute ago that He commanded them, saying, right. "We need to learn how to be." Obedient to what God command us to do. That's right. We we can't make. You know, I have a lot of excuses why I don't want to do a lot of things, That's Pastor. Right. That's right. You know, when I I, I work for a specific um, uh, a motor maker. company, mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. you know, I had all kind of excuses daily why I didn't want to go, mm -hmm. and some of them was legitimate, Pastor. I I really did sometimes have a headache. Mm -hmm. I really didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. I really had some real issues. Mm -hmm. But you know what, Pastor? Because it was my job. Mm -hmm. I'm saying something right mm -hmm. there. Right. Because it was my job and no, I had right. made covenant you're with right. this particular right. company. Right. I said that I would be on my job at 11 o'clock at night. Wh whether it be snowing, mm -hmm. whether it be raining, whether it be hot, whether I was not well, whether my children were catching their healing, whatever was going on in my life, I made covenant with them to do a job and be there every night that they had me scheduled. Right. Well, the same thing with God. You made covenant with him. Come on, Pastor. You told him, you, when you save me, Lord, I'm going to work for That's you. You know, you we said. love to That's say stuff like that. I go if I got to go all by myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to serve the Lord until I die. Mm -hmm. Those songs sound cute, Pastor, right. but right. when it comes time to do the work of ministry, mm -hmm. you're going to have to do the work of ministry. That's right. Whether you feel like it, whether it's right. convenient, whether it's cold outside, whether it's hot outside, men still need to hear about Jesus. I'm so glad I'm saved. I don't I know, know what I'm to do. You're right, Pastor. You're I'm so glad right. I'm saved. I don't know what right. to do. Absolutely. And I believe that there are other people out there who are lost, who are just like you and I, Pastor. There's no question, Pastor. I mean, you know, if people would begin to think about uh, what 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 situation, what place would you be in if a man wasn't obedient and ministered wow. the gospel of Jesus Christ to you? Wow, now you if somebody something. didn't put their flesh under mm. and, and and had the uh, sensitivity to hear the Holy Spirit mm. say, go minister to that young, that woman that got you spirit filled at the hair salon. Right. What if she didn't, uh, what if she wasn't sensitive enough That's right, to hear the Holy Spirit say, that woman is hurting and crying out. That's she, right. She's crying for more of me. He, you are my vessel. Go on over there and, right. and get, wh where, would we right, be? where would we be? That's right, Pastor. Well, I guarantee we wouldn't be sitting here right, right now preaching the gospel of Jesus Amen. Christ on these airways. I guarantee you right now the people <laughs> who are in our ministry benefit from the anointing Amen. God put on our lives wouldn't be there right now because God knew what we needed at that time. And this Amen. woman was sensitive of God, to God enough to be able to supply to you wow. what freely she had given. Amen. Listen, Pastor, we're going to take a break. Okay. We're going to take a, a two-minute, two two-second two break. <laughs> and we're going to come back in a few minutes. Listen, our number is one two four eight nine nine six eight nine five four. Why don't you give us a call? We'll be back in two minutes and two seconds. Tap into the increase. Every one of man's dilemmas, the answer can be found in God's word. Join us, Pastor Curtis and Tammy Stevens at Increasing Faith Ministry at 7 p.m. for Bible study and every Saturday at 11 a.m. for Sabbath worship. Tap into the increase. Join us again at Increasing Faith Ministries. For more information, 313-526-2926.
248-996-8954. Call in right now for prayer. Uh, maybe there'll be a prophetic word for you. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking. Amen. I feel prophetic today. Amen. Praise God. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray for you. If you you need healing, we want to touch and agree with you. Amen, Pastor. Uh, that by your, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, by His shed blood, you're already healed. Amen. We believe that. Amen. Amen. Pastor, let's go to Luke chapter 14. I want to kind of go over that story that okay. you mentioned. Okay. And I just you know it, our, uh, people are watching and listening, and I just want them to see what the Word of God is saying. Amen. Uh, Luke 14 and 50 says, And when one of them sat at meat with him, heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, uh -huh. and bade or requested many to come, and sent okay. his servant at supper time to say to them that were called, Come, for all things are now ready. Amen. And see, Pastor, this is the message that Jesus Christ wants the believers to take to a lost of dying wow. world. Whatever you need is ready. It's ready. Good God Almighty. It's ready, I like Pastor. that. It's ready. Whatever you need is ready. You know, uh, Jesus said, I come that you might have life. And have it more abundantly. So that means anything that you need, it's ready. I got it. There's sickness in this world I'm ready. to heal you. There is lack and poverty I'm out ready. here to give you abundance. Come on. And so uh, we, this is the message that we take. Come we don't on. take a message of doubt and unbelief. We don't or take fear. a message or he might do it. Maybe he will. That's Maybe right, he Pastor. won't. No, That's the right. scripture says that a certain man made a great supper. Mm. Well, you know, the Bible tells us in uh, Psalm 23, that um, the Bible says that God will prepare a table for us in the presence of That's our right. enemies. That's so the, right. the, everything that we need is God ready. God's got, got everything that we need. Amen. Verse number 18 says, And they were all with one consent began to make excuse. Come on, Pastor. The first said unto him, I bought a piece of ground, and I must I must needs go and see it. Okay. I pray you have me excused. Okay. Excuse number one. And another <laughs> said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I, I pray you have me excused. Mm, excuse mm, number mm. two. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot you come. You know I can't come. You know I can't make it mm -hmm. now because I'm, I'm a newlywed. Because I'm married wet, now. And I got to, yeah, I got to get my groove on. Okay. But you know what, Pastor? In all those excuses, and we have heard a plethora of excuses personally why people can't do something. But I find it very interesting that these people had received what they had desired Oh, yeah, for. yeah, no question. They got their yoke of oxen. They got yeah, their peace, land. So, see, that's what, that's what I'm saying, Pastor. And I was going to go into that okay. in, in, in our next segment. The, many of the issue is that people cannot do for Christ uh -huh. what they're obligated to do because now they have received uh -huh. what they want. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. But you have to realize there's a consequence uh -huh. to that uh -huh. type of uh -huh. action. And we're going to get to that. Okay. Uh, verse number 20 says, Another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Uh -huh. So what the men and women of God do, they say, well, Okay, Lord, I'm trying to teach him. <laughs> I, I didn't I'm told to, him. I'm trying to let him know, uh -huh. you know what they need come on, to Pastor. do. Watch this, though. But the Bible says, Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the, the poor, poor, the maimed, the and the halt, and, and the, the blind. blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. Oh and the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and, and hedges, the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. And so what, what, we, what we're seeing, uh, Pastor, is we're seeing people want to go out and get church transfers. Okay. And, but, the, but the scripture here, Jesus is plainly telling us that we're to go out into the streets. That's right, Pastor. And people that are poor and hot and wow. maimed and, and lame, these are the people that are hungry and they will take what Jesus Come has. Come on, Pastor. They will receive of him. Come on now. Uh, you remember when uh, in Acts, I believe it's chapter number three, I could be wrong, I'll quote okay. me on this, Pastor, but there was a man sitting at the gate Beautiful. at the time of prayer. That's right. Uh, and he couldn't walk. That's right. And so it, here's a perfect example. And Peter and John are on their way mm -hmm. to the to the temple to the to the house to worship. And, and this man receives his miracle. That's what he does. Well, these are the people that God is looking for. Mm. Why? Because the scripture says he asked them for money, but he expects to receive something. something. And so people are out there, Pastor. If we'll go to the right ones, they're expecting to receive something. something. Church people ain't expecting to receive nothing. Nothing. Because they already think they got everything. They need now, to be, on, uh, 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 two thirds of them need to be deprogrammed come and on. put in with the right information. Oh, my God. And so as a believer, Pastor, I don't want to I don't want to deal with church folks. Come on, folks. I want to deal come with the now. people out here that are hungry. And I got sense enough to know that if I pray and ask God, Lord, mm. send me uh, across the path of those that are hungry, on, that want you. That's exactly what he's going to do. And see, Pastor, I love what you're saying because it's really not about uh, church transfers as much as it's about souls. We keep having to reiterate to the people of God. That's it's about, about soul. Not it's about not you. about your car. Right. It's not about a fancy house. 
It's not about living good. Those are byproducts of working benefits. in the kingdom. Right, right. When you work, you get the benefits. Right. When you don't work, you get no benefits. And why people are so downtrodden and so frustrated is because they won't go work in right. the kingdom, right. but they want the benefits. Right. Does business right. like that. Right. I'm not going to pay nobody in my business right. and you don't come to work on time, right. you don't do the job, mm. and then you going to come command me to pay you 40 right. hours, right. you weren't here on time, I'm docking your pay. Well, you weren't doing your job. Right. So, Pastor, we got so many people in the body of Christ, they're not doing their job. And That's if right. they would just go back and look at how they treat the kingdom, wow. how they treat the position that God has placed them in, wow. how, what they don't do, they'll yes. realize the reason I don't have the car, the house, I don't have the things that I desire. It's because I don't do the work of ministry. That's very simple, Pastor. You know, people, oh, they want a paycheck and they want a job, but they don't want to work. See, people want, they here. want a job, they want a paycheck. But they don't want to work. This is not welfare. <laughs> this is this kingdom. Is, this is kingdom. You're not going to get the welfare here. Mm. This is kingdom. we got to deprogram people out of the welfare mind. That's right. They, they, they're trapped in this welfare system right. that I can get something right. for nothing. Right. Because they've been, they've been trained in churches that all I got to do is release my faith. Well, you know, faith without works is dead. dead. So you have to do something. Uh, along with releasing your faith, Come on, uh, you got a spiritual side and you got a natural side. Pastor. You can't hop on one foot, turn around and spin around and throw your bills on the on the floor, and then God just gonna pay them. You gotta get up and go get a job, That's honey. It, it, it's not hocus pocus, Pastor. Right, Pastor. We talk about that all the time. Right. Nobody's gonna wave no wand over right, you. Right, right, right. No, this is real life. There's a part that's spiritual, but there's a natural that's part right. as well, Pastor. That's right. That's right. And I think a lot of times we have been tricked or duped. Because it's filtered out of laziness out of a lot of the Christians. We've been duped into believing if I just shout a little bit, mm. if I just run all over the building, then God just going to do something. That ain't no, it. you can shout and run and get all sweaty and it. fall out, out in the floor, but ain't nothing going to happen until you put some natural to that spiritual, that's Pastor. It, right. And we've got to get out of the welfare mind that's, that's right. in the body of Christ. That's right. I, nothing from nothing. Leaves nothing. Okay. you got to have some. Oh, if you want to be with Jesus. The Bible says in uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 23, and the Lord said unto the servant go out into the highways and hedges compel them to come in that my house may be filled so wow. what is the heart of god that, that the house, house be filled. filled now he's not talking about uh specifically the the four walls Amen. he's talking about the body of christ the kingdom. the kingdom of god needs to be filled with souls wow. amen and then he says in verse 24 for i say unto you that none of those men which were bitten that had the excuse Shall taste of my, of my supper. supper. Now, that's now you didn't. That's, that's it, the, right that's there. The so if you find yourself frustrated. You find yourself not operating in the way that you know that you should operate in. You need to go back and check. Am I working in the kingdom? Wow. Have I done what I'm supposed to do? Well, the question has to be, what am I doing for Christ? Mm. The, what's the what's the what we love to say? Only what you do for Christ will last. But what are you doing? That's right, that's Pastor. That's what you have to ask. Come on, Pastor. Church attendance is not the is not the prerequisite. The Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. And even in that, people don't understand what that means. On, but Pastor. anyway, uh, church attendance is not that. It's not the total answer. You're not doing God a favor because you pray an hour every day. <laughs> You're not doing God Amen. no favors because you get into the Word. And maybe, you know, Pastor, I've said this many times. Folks just walk into church late oh, as Lord. if they're doing, uh, maybe they think they're doing the pastor a favor. That's exactly but what they think. But you're not doing yourself a favor. You're not doing the kingdom a favor. You're dishonoring God. <laughs> your your time and your talent, your, your resources, you're actually disrespecting the kingdom of God when you walk in his house as if you're doing him a favor. We've got that? to get to the place that we understand. We're not playing with our friends. That's right. It's not our cousin. That's right. This is God, this the is creator God. of that's heaven right. and earth. That's right, that's right, Pastor. We, I don't, I don't ahead, understand Pastor. that. Come on. Now, folks come in, praise and worship have started. First of all, we, we've been in we've been in corporate prayer for a half That's hour right, before Pastor. the praise and worship started. That's right. Set the atmosphere. That's right. And people don't realize things grow in atmosphere, That's right, climates. That's and right. so we're setting that, making it conducive Amen. for God to come in and Amen. worship, getting people's minds off their week Amen. and the things that have happened and get them over onto high expectation for That's God right. to move right. during our corporate prayer. And then we have our prayer and worship where we uh where you say how, how you always say you invite your invite what's that invoke word you, you invoke his you presence invoke his presence to come in and we're i got that from my mama amen dr <laughs> bevel we're inviting him to come in amen. And, and we're loving on him amen. and we're we're waiting on him because yes, if, he, wait. If, he, if he if he don't come in we don't want to be we there. don't want to be there and so and then here you come with your bad spirit you late 
late. You got the world on you. You've been right, listening Pastor. to uh, all this I'm ungodly fussing. stuff on the way to you and That's your right. husband fussing and right. arguing. And here you come in bringing that bad tension and spirit after we done set the atmosphere. So and we got to do gotta... 10 more minutes just to get, get that out the way. But see, Pastor, this is what I know. It's a lack of respect. Right. Because when you respect somebody, I'm preaching good yeah, right there. On. When you respect somebody, you do everything you can to make it easy for them. Mm -hmm. When I respect you, I don't fuss up at you. I don't just do anything that is going to disrupt your spirit. Right, right. I make sure that I do things that's going to encourage you and help you. Right. And so when we come to the household of God, not mm -hmm. understanding, number one, I need to get my heart ready. Number two, and see, Pastor, most of the times that people come in late, they're not, their heart is not ready. Mm -hmm. It's because they ain't done no work. That's true. They have have not gone out into the field and brought people into the body of Christ. Because right. see, Pastor, when you've done your job, right. you're ready. Right. You're so full of love. You just want to get in the presence of God. You have saved, you have brought men into salvation. Right. You want all that you need. You want to get built back up so you can go again. That's right. You want to be able to show men the love of Christ. That's right. And so you're so excited to get back to God. You're so excited to see the souls that yes. you won yes. to the body of Christ. You turn so around, looking you're just around, looking around. That's right. Oh, that's right. that that sister right there, I saw her and I preach to her she here and that's her children mm. and and that man right there that's his wife oh my god i preached to them right. and they was on their way to divorce court that's but right. they're here right now right. and so pastor we got so many people don't understand that that's what it's about that's they come about, and hear pastor. a good word and then this is what they say pastor good word pastor that's what they say listen call one two four eight nine nine six eight nine five four Come on and give us a call, and we're going to pray for you tonight. But, Pastor, that's what they say. That was a good word, which, which says to me a lot of times, I ain't going to do nothing. Mm. That was a good word, but let's see what you're going to do with it. Well, let's talk about this, Pastor. Let's talk about what you just said. You made, you brought a very good point up, and I taught a, I taught a message on this a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. about uh, in Isaiah chapter 11. You don't have to go there right okay. now. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, there there's seven facets of the anointing that's okay. talking about yes, there. Yes, it's yes, talking yes, about yes. the anointing of wisdom and counsel and might okay. and one very important anointing in there that a lot of people skip over and that is the anointing fear of the Lord. fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I think in Romans, the Bible talks about that's one of the reasons why there is a lot of wickedness going on because, wow. people, because people have lost that fear or that reverence, that that's fear right. being reverence for the things of God. Wow. And people can come in late. Now I ain't talking about just um, periodically. Right. No, Got a flat no, tire and I'm late. No, we we looking for you to be late. Right. Now we know we start at eleven. We know you ain't coming till eleven thirty. You know, you're gonna sashay in. Right. As Bishop say, walk in the front, shaking hands, yeah, disrupting yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we've lost that anointing, you know, and the anointing comes in to remove the burden and destroy the yoke, yeah. according to Isaiah ten twenty seven. Yeah. And so when that anointing of the fear of the Lord is lost, and there we people have lost that reverence for God. Wow, respect. That respect and mm -hmm. that of uh, for who he is. Come on. You know, God is not a God to be worshipped and praised. Uh, depending upon your circumstance and That's situation. Right. He's God. Uh, he's God. He deserves your reverence. He deserves mm. your awe because of who he is. You know, Pastor, mm -hmm. I, I, I feel terrible if I'm I'm late. And late for us is like a quarter two. I don't I don't like to be late for God. Yeah. I want to be on time for God because I want God to be on time for yeah, me. Right, right. And I, I have to be very honest. You know, I think we had a situation where we, the traffic was terrible yeah, and right, we were, we were locked in traffic right. and you did a lot of maneuvering and got us out but of it. Thank God. But we were late. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, Pastor? It bothered me. Right. It bothered me right. because I want to be I want to be the best I can be for God. That's right. Pastor. Whatever the best I can be, I want to be that. That's why I pray, Pastor, mm -hmm. because I want to be the best vessel he can use. Yes. That's why I live a holy life, because I want to be the best vessel he can use. Right. I want him to, at any time, I don't care where we are, he can say to me, Tammy, yeah. I want you to go and prophesy to that person mm -hmm. right there. And you're and ready. I, and I'm ready, right. and I just go do it. Right. I don't stand there and think about what I'm going to say. I know, because my heart doesn't condemn me, Pastor, because I haven't been you know, praying or whatever the case may be, or I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. I know I live in such a way that God can use me mm -hmm. at any time. Right. And I think a lot of times in the body of Christ, we, we and let me just say this too, even when you mess up, Right, right. And even when you mess up, he still wants to use you, and he will use you. Yes, he you. will. So I, I just encourage people to understand that about him. He's always ready to use you, whether or not you, you've done all the A, B, and C. That's he right. still wants sure, to use sure, you. Sure, sure, Amen. Well, we're going to take a break. Yeah, we're gonna come back past our last segment. Man, our time wow. is almost up. Okay. But uh, we thank God. Two four eight nine nine six eight nine five four is a call in number. But we want to invite you to our service, Amen. Increasing Faith Ministry, Tuesday evenings at seven for our Bible class one five eight two zero Wyoming. 
uh, in Detroit, Michigan, or on Saturday mornings at 11 for our Sabbath worship. Pastor, join us for, you know, uh, a great word. Amen. Uh, great uh, praise and worship. Amen. Uh, where the Spirit of God is moving. Amen. We believe God. The gifts are flowing. Amen. Uh, believing God for miracle signs and wonders in the life of his people Amen. and those that come in. 15820 Wyoming and Detroit. Or you call us tonight, 248-996-8954. Pastor, we're going to take a break. We'll be back. Two minutes and two seconds. You're watching Tap Into the Eagle. They say that the economy is bad. But God says you're the lender and not the borrower. They say that our city is on its way out. But God says you're blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Violence is taking over the land. But God says they'll come at you one way and flee before you seven ways. They say that same-sex marriage is inevitable. But God says a man leaves his father and mother and cleaves unto his wife. As you can see, for every one of man's dilemmas, the answer can be found in God's Word. Join us, Pastor Curtis and Tammy Stevens, at Increasing Faith Ministry at 7 p.m. for Bible study and every Saturday at 11 a.m. for Sabbath worship. Tap into the increase. Join us again at Increasing Faith Ministries. For more information, 313-526-2926. Pastor Curtis, Pastor Tammy, uh, we're talking about, um, we were talking about God's son, moved over <laughs> into <laughs> uh, evangelism, but we were talking about the main responsibility Amen. of the men and women of God. When we talk Amen. about men and women of God in this in this aspect or in this respect, Pastor, we're talking about the body of Christ Amen. and evangelism and winning souls Amen. Uh, is what we're dealing with. So we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 right now, Pastor, okay. and 
we have so many people come to us and say, well, pastor, you know, I don't know what I'm called to do. I don't know. You know, I want God to show me what my ministry is. I'm going to show you what your ministry is in the word of God. You Amen. can't deny this. If you read your Bible and you come across this, <laughs> you know. And, and, and this ministry, pastor, to me, uh, I do believe I'm not in error when I say this. This is the ministry that God trains you for, Amen. for your personal ministry. Amen. I believe everybody in the body of Christ has an evangelistic oh, uh, anointing. I absolutely. believe that. Absolutely. And I believe that this is where God starts you. Amen. I know that uh, years ago, uh, when I say years ago, years ago, 20 something years ago, yeah. when I first got saved, this was where God led me, you Amen. and I. We began Bell to, uh, yeah, we just would go and print out Flyers. the plan of salvation, right. the Romans Row, Romans That's chapter right. 10. That's Hit right. Belal on a right. Saturday afternoon yes, around the water when everybody would be around there drinking and smoking and yes, getting high. Yes, we did. And we would pass out tracks and try to talk to people about getting saved. Amen. And some people we ministered to, some didn't want to hear it. Yeah. But we got some people saved in those That's days. Right. And what happened was God saw our faithfulness to that. Promotion came in our life. He moved us up the ladder. That's right, Pastor. And so I believe that if people understand that this is where it starts, That's Pastor. Right. That's this right. is the groundwork ministry. This is the dirty work that a lot of people don't, don't like to do, do unfortunately. Don't want to do but it. But it's what God has called us to. Amen. Let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now, you made a statement earlier. You said, you know, even when you slip up and mess up, God yeah, will use you. still use you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Amen. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. And that, that scripture puts me in the, in the mind and lets me know, Pastor, that even though sometimes, even though I'm born again, mm -hmm. you know, I still have some ways that I think that sure. are not until I renew my mind in Amen. the word of God. Amen. So I may go back and do some things that are not like Christ Amen. from time to time. But as I continue to stay in the Word and get my mind renewed, amen, amen and transformed, uh, even those things will change. Amen. It says, all things are of God, verse 18, who hath reconciled us. Wow. Amen. Amen. To himself. Amen. By Jesus Christ. Watch this. And then has given to us the ministry wow. of, of reconciliation. reconciliation. And so, Pastor, would you say now that the Bible is telling us now that we have been reconciled or bought back or purchased. Yes, right. Amen. Nothing being held to our account. Amen. Now we have the ministry to go and let other people know that. Amen. And you know what? I like that word reconcile. Mm -hmm. It is to bring a man back into right relationship yes. with Jesus yes. Christ. You can go out and reconcile a man who's lost, a woman who's confused. You can mm. bring them back into relationship with Jesus Christ. And you know what, Pastor? There is no better feeling. There is no better joy. There's no better love. You know, there's something that happens on the inside of me. Every time God uses me to prophesy, every yes. time I go out and God causes me or speaks to me about praying for somebody, there's something that happens on the inside of me that I get great joy. Yes. Honestly, Pastor, there's very rare a time that I come to the church and I'm sad because when I do my job, yep. I'm, I'm preaching really good to myself right mm -hmm. now. Right. When you do your job, there's such great joy right. in knowing that I have changed a man's life. I just snatched somebody out of the grips of the devil. I may have just changed generations. That's right. That's See, right. Pastor, that's, that's a right. powerful that's statement. Right. When right. you go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to a man or a woman that is lost and you snatch them from the grips of death, when yes. you snatch them from hell, you don't know how many generations wow. you have just affected. Right. Their children's children's children that's will right. be saved from that one moment. And that's what the devil fights. Mm -hmm. And that's why he has people so confused about what they're supposed to do. That's right. why he has people standing around talking about, well, Pastor, you know, I'm shy. Pastor, I really don't know what to say. But you know what, Pastor, when you get in your mind that when I go preach this gospel, mm -hmm. there's a true possibility that I will change the direction wow. of their generations. Yes, yes, it yes. does something in your spirit. It's doing something to me right now saying it. Yes. Because you have just now turned the tables. Because what the devil intended to do in generations. He won't in be that, able to do Come on, Pastor. That's right. That's right. And because of your obedience and right. because you said, yes. I am going to obey God and right. preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. That's right. Now I want us to go to Romans 8, Pastor. Okay. Because you, you're talking talking about being able to do ministry right. and, and not feel condemned because there are people right now who are watching us saying, well, you know what? They are really teaching a word, mm -hmm. but you know what? I feel like I didn't done too much. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm saved, I don't know if I can use, if God will use me to be prophetic. Even though I'm saved, right. there have been so many things that I've done. I don't know if God will use me like that, but you've already established in the scripture that we have a ministry of reconciliation, right. but we're going to take it a step further in Romans eight and one. 
There is now, mm -hmm. excuse me, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, okay. who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Right. God is not condemning you. Once you get over into the things of God, you no longer have the, you know, you don't need to walk in the flesh. You now can walk in the realm of the spirit. And you begin to understand, you know what, this ain't about the natural. This is about the spirit. It's about me being able to do the work of ministry and to help a man see who they really are. Right. Pastor, I thank God for somebody preaching salvation to me. I know you, me. I'm telling you. I, I do. I thank I'm God every day yeah. that somebody took the time to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to mm -hmm. me and change my generation. I wonder when the people of God are going to come to the point where they understand God's love for us. Wow. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. One scripture says, when we were enemies wow. of God. On, that's Pastor. when he reconciled us. Oh, that's when he gave his son. When we were his enemy. enemy. Now that we are his sons, Come how on. much more Come on, Pastor. is he going to love us? And So that, that lie that the devil be telling you know, the, the, the people I'm of God. I'm shy. I don't know what to say. Well, you know what? Say what you would want to hear there you if go. you was there lost. You That's right, Pastor. Say what you, you That's know, right. you know where you've been. Say, say what, what you want, want somebody yeah. to right. say to you. That's right. That's he right. says in verse number two, for the law of the spirit of life mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. You free, free baby. That's it. You free, so you don't have to be in bondage to the thought. Well, I've done so many things in my former no, life. You're free. No, I'm saved. No, you're free. I know I'm saved, but I've done so many things. Look, hon, you saved and you're free. Right. And then he goes on to say this in verse number four: For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, uh -huh. God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, mm. condemned sin in the flesh. I like that, That's Pastor. Beautiful. Verse number four, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled where? In us. In us. Who walk not after the flesh, but, but after the spirit. spirit. See, and you know what? When people come and make excuses why they can't do something, you in your flesh. Mm. You're not understanding what happened when Jesus was on the earth and he gave himself for yes. you. You're not understanding what really happened. You're not understanding what he really done. Because when you understand what he really did, you understand there's no excuse for me not to do my job. That's it, that's Jesus it. took my sin. That's he it. took the penalty of my sin. He was beaten. He was bruised. He was spit on. Hair was snatched out of his face. And I'm not going to dare say that I can't do the work of ministry wow. after all that he suffer for me. That's it. That's There's it. a song that we say, you know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I think it goes something like this about sin. I don't know what the cost was mm -hmm. of my sin when he was hanging on that cross. Right. There's a cost that was paid for all of us yeah. when he hung up on that tree. That's right. He paid a penalty and he paid for all of our sins. Right. You know what's wrong with the world? They don't know they can that's be right. saved. That's right. The Bible says that uh, Christ has paid for the sins of the world. Wow. Not, not, not just the believer. Come on, the sins of the world. Every man, woman, boy, and girl that's on this planet that has ever walked this planet. Mm. Every man, woman, boy, and girl, Christ came and paid for our wow. sin. So that's the message, Pastor. Tell them that. People just don't know it. And see, when you begin, I'm, I'm talking to you, sir and ma'am. When you begin to preach that, that Jesus paid for the sins of the world. You know, people go start talking about they ain't worthy. That's what you tell them. That's right. Well, I've done too much. No, Jesus paid for it. Well, you know what? I so just got can, through smoking weed. Jesus paid for that so you can go free. Come on, Pastor. Amen. God is always opening doors to the believers to preach the gospel. But, Pastor, we, a lot of times people have blinders on. We're dealing with so much going on in our life, we miss opportunities. Right. And we've got to allow ourselves to take the blinders off of right. what's going on in my life. Right. Right. What I don't have, what right. I can't do, where right. I can't go, and just begin to say, I'm not going to get into that. Amen. I'm going to do the work of ministry. I'm going to tell a lost and dying right. world right. that Jesus sent his only right. begotten son that whosoever right. believe in him should not perish but, but have everlasting life. everlasting life. We would have missed this opportunity, Pastor, had we not... Uh, uh, had we not, had we been concentrating on what we didn't have wow. and who was doing this Come better on. than us and on, who Pastor. over here doing that? Well, when this door opened for us to go, we just to ran go on here, in. You know, hey, there's a door open. And see, so this is what I know about God. Iron sharpens iron. Sure. You need to begin to understand that there are places that God wants to sharpen your gift right. and he wants to sharpen the tools that exactly. he's placed oh, yeah. in you. Oh, yeah. And you can't fight God. See, a lot of people want to get in the pulpit, but let me tell you something. You don't want to get in that pulpit and you ain't ready for the pulpit because 
because with the pulpit comes a lot of other stuff. That's right. And you know what? With every level, there's another devil. Amen. You might want to just sharpen your tools out there in the world and not get up in the pulpit till you're ready. Because if you can't, you know, Pastor, you know, you got to start by cleaning up in the church. Well, pulpit ministry, Pastor, is not glamorous. It's a sacrifice. It's an what? emptying out. Uh, the scripture God. says in Romans chapter number 8, uh, Jesus said, if you can't suffer with me. You can't reign with me. people don't understand, pulpit ministry is suffering. Cause it ain't about you not one this day. No, this ain't about you. No, at no t all you're doing <laughs> is serving and giving of yourself. Amen. This Pastor. is not glamour. And if, if if you look at the, if you look at the past behind the pulpit and you see glamour. <laughs> <laughs> then you need to change your mindset. <laughs> Amen, and Pastor. men and women of God have an anointing to make it look easy, That's but it's not easy. Well, now you didn't set it off. It's Pastor. not simple. You set it off. This is our life. This is what we're called to. This is our. This is our. Um, uh, this is our sacrifice. That's our right. lives are a sacrifice. That's right, Pastor. Oh, I, I, I'm with Bishop sometime, and I see how many people are, are pulling on him, pulling on him, pulling wow. on him, pulling on him. Every direction he walk into a room, you got seven people want to talk to him, pulling him in different directions, trying to take his mind in different directions. Wow. This is a sacrifice. It this is. is. This is not glamour. Amen, Pastor. And so people have the wrong mindset about that. But I like what you said about God sharpening you yes. and using you out there. Pastor, let's get Amen. down to verse number 14 because sure. I think this is where you want to go. Sure. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of That's God. That's right, Pastor. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Wow. You don't have to fear ministering to people. That's right. It's who you are. It's what you've been called to do. Amen. And you need to get out there and let God use you. And see, you know, when you start talking fear, you now you're getting in bondage. That's right. That's it. And you got you to recognize, it. I'm not going to be in bondage to That's fear it. to go out and tell a man, get saved. Fear is of the devil. The Bible teaches us God have not given us a spirit of fear, but, but a, a power, power of love, and, and a sound mind. mind. Why? To do your job. Amen. He says, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we ye have received the spirit of adoption, That's whereby right. we cry... Our Father. Father, the Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. You, you, are, you are a child of God, and you're scared to go out and tell somebody. Your spirit <laughs> is saying, go, child of God, go, son, and go get these folks saved. Right. Your spirit, if you're not, you know what, Pastor? If you go any place and you see somebody in a wheelchair, mm. you see somebody and they're sick, mm -hmm. if there's not an unction in you to go pray, you need to go check and see if you say. saved. Mm. Because there should be something stirring compassion, around in you. Compassion. There should. Compassion. You know what? I need to go over there and pray. Compassion. And and you shouldn't fight the idea of going to pray. Go pray for right, them. Right. I promise you they ain't going to say no. But I if they do, you. it's okay. I have yet. Me, me I have yet to run into people that, that the Spirit of God was moving in me. And I went to them and asked for prayer. And they said no. You know, Pastor, I can remember. And this is just an example. You and I were at a Coney Island, I believe. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we were eating and enjoying ourselves. And actually, I really didn't want to go, but the Lord said, you know, go ahead to Coney Island. Mm -hmm. And we went, and there was a woman behind me. Right. I didn't see her until we stood up to pay for our meal. And when I stood up, I heard the Holy Spirit say, that lady behind you right now, turn around and look at her. And Pastor, she had her hand over her, her right. head. Yeah. And he she said, was heavy. To, and she was heavy. Yeah. He said, go over there and pray for her. Pastor, I didn't make a big scene. Right. I didn't, you know, sha ba 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 ba. I went over to her, I gently touched her pastor, and I whispered in her ear slightly. I asked her, did she, she mind if I prayed for her? And I prayed for her, pastor. I asked her what she said. I remember. And I, I prayed a, a salvation with her, and then I began to prophesy to her. Right. And I began to speak a word that God was a healer, and right. that God was right. going to heal right. her body, right. and that the, the, the word that she got from the physician, God had already set up an opportunity for her healing. Yeah. yeah. She had just come from the hospital, which was around the corner, and I believe they told her she, she had, had cancer. cancer. Right. Right. So, see, had I been standing there saying, I'm going to pay for my meal, we're getting ready to leave, I wouldn't have been able to give this woman her word. And she wept. She did. And wept did. and wept. And I had no idea that she had been diagnosed with cancer. She said, I've been sitting here talking to God, yes, asking she did. God. Yes, she did. About this. And yes, here she did. you are, God sent you to tell me it was going to be okay. Yes, she did. That brought life to that woman. Come on, Pastor. It brought hope to that yes, woman. Yes, it did. It brought expectation to that woman My because God. before you prayed for her, she was heavy. And Pastor, let me tell you what it did for me. 
It helped me. Right. It encouraged me. Right. It let me know I do hear God. Right. It helped me understand I am gifted. I right. am anointed. When I pray, something's going to happen. It, and see, Pastor, that's what the people of God got to know. It. It's not in your fashion show. It's not in the auxiliary. It ain't it's in not your a, CD. Come on. It's in, am I going to change a man's life that's if it. I open my mouth? That's it, Pastor. That's it. Amen. Well, we want to thank you for joining us. Tap into the increase with Pastor Curtis. Pastor Tammy, our time is up. Uh, come and join us on Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. for our Bible study, 15820 Wyoming in Detroit, just north of the Lodge Freeway, or on Saturday mornings at 11 a.m. for our worship service. We'd love to have you come out and be with us. I really enjoyed our time today. I, did. I enjoyed I'm it very. Well. I'm looking forward to next week. But you can tune in anytime on It's Web TV on On Demand and go back and watch any of our previous um, teachings or previous lessons that we've taught. And we know that they're, they're uh, surely going to be a blessing to you. Real quickly, if you're out there right now and you're watching us and you're not saved, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, your word says that if we confess our faults and our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. Now, Father, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and rose just for me. Jesus, come into my heart. Save me now. You know what you've just done? You've just received Jesus Christ Hallelujah. as your Lord and Savior. Now I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, you, Lord. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that those who have spoke those words out of their mouth will receive you, Father. And not only receive you, but, Father, that they be sealed until the day of redemption. Yes. Father, I thank you for their salvation. I give you glory, honor, and praise for it. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and uh, and got born again tonight, call us, 313-526-2926. Someone's going to take some information from you. We're going to get a special thing out, special gift out to you. And we want to just correspond with you, lead you further on in your destiny and things of God. Amen. Well, Pastor, till next week. Amen. It's been great being with you. Great being with you. See you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Tap into the increase. increase.